Good evening, good evening. Before you have a seat, let's just lift up the name of God in this place. Let's lift him up in this place. He's worthy. We serve an awesome God. You're so awesome and we're grateful, God. One more time, let's just give him his just due. He's worthy, y'all. He's worthy. He's a good God. And you know what I want to say to you all? Have a seat, but I just want to ask you. Ask yourself. I'm going to ask myself. Was that the best you can do for God? Just a question. Just a question. So when I say, let's lift up the name of the Lord, you act like he's done something for you. Hallelujah, God. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. There is no one like you, God. You are a just, faithful, and awesome God. And we love you for that. Just for that. Amen. 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 Never will Prince of Peace ever have an opportunity to give God praise. And we act like, uh, I never. We love God in this place. Amen. We will be the church that he comes looking for. We will be the church that he inhabits our praises. We will be the church that when somebody says Prince of Peace, he said, oh, that church those people amen amen you may be seated you may be seated thank you so much for you all coming out to the house of god we bless god for you and for you for tuning into facebook and our other social media platforms we serve an awesome magnificent wonderful god he is truly truly worthy amen so i had one announcement one good announcement and then some more things that we've heard but they're very brief announcements but the first announcement i have for you is bishop and i okay so first of all thank you all for coming out last week thank you so much you came out at nine o'clock then you came out again and traveled with us to a whole nother church and y'all turned that thing out you packed the house and didn't we have a good time so afterwards um pastor antoine newsom and his wonderful beautiful wife asia um pastor uh, lady asia newsom took us to a restaurant called cooper's restaurant so when we walked in i was like good gracious so let me tell you what was on the menu okay so it was turkey wings it was liver and onions and gravy it was cabbage it was collard greens it was string beans it was um pork chops and gravy it was hot fish you know the kind where you eat and you go <laughs> it's so hot it was so good pig feet okay pig feet <laughs> fried chicken do you hear what i'm saying candy yams macaroni and cheese you know when you start doing this <laughs> you can imagine how good it was so with that being said it was so 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 good bishop and i of course because we love our congregation so much and we didn't know some of their other some of their congregation was going so since we love our congregation so much we're like uh-uh we're gonna bring our congregation out there so for you who want to eat next week we will travel over there right after worship service to cooper's restaurant it is on high street now let me tell you it's at 3112 High Street. Of course, we won't be able to do a caravan because, you know, inevitably somebody's going to get left behind. But it is at 3112 High Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. They open at 12 noon. Now, this is the caveat. Let me tell you. I know y'all thought, oh, they're going to pay for everybody now. Y'all know we're trying to get a new church. So we're not paying for you, okay? But I do have the prices for you. So it will be, and this is, um, without this is with tax but without gratuity because of course they're gonna charge us because we're coming as a church but it's 2382 per person but you have to think it's all you can eat and that comes with the drink and the uh homemade desserts I, yeah i said it homemade desserts okay and then for the kids this phone these smartphones boy they will get you 
because sometimes they don't act too smart. All right, twelve ninety nine for kids six to twelve. Okay, and then five and under is free. And y'all don't get up in there having a twelve year old talking about Sunday five. Okay. All right, five and under is free. Again, we're going to go right after worship service. And you know, we are a blessed church because Bishop does not hold us long. So we will get there first. Amen. 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 So again, if you want to travel, what I do would like for you to do, I'm, I'm not going to set this in stone, but I would like to give the owner because he told me to give him a call. Um, if you could just let me know, hey, I am going, count me in. I need you to tell me how many are in your party that are going so that we can have a number for him. And I want to give him that number. But if you don't go, you know you're going to hear us talking about it. Oh, that food was good. Okay. All right. So make sure that you, um, that you get back with me. But again, that's on this Sunday now, this Sunday after church, we will travel. Prince of Peace will go to Cooper's Restaurant for those who want to go. Also, don't forget to share our Facebook with your family and friends. And thank you so much for always giving. I've been seeing people still putting in building fund. I saw some good building funds coming in because you all know our time is winding down. Let me tell you, Bishop and I are working like crazy. We were up at 4 o'clock yesterday, was it? 4 o'clock working because they have us jumping through hoops. But guess what? The work is worth it. Bishop and I went walking one day, and we were talking, and God told me, he literally said, not, we both were saying it to one another, and, and God said, you got faith, and I'm proud, but faith without works is dead. So the work is worth, the faith and the faith is worth the uh, work. So you have to do the work and add your faith to it. So we are doing that, and note that that church is ours. Amen. You keep giving, you keep giving, and you keep giving because we are planning on closing at the end of this month. We already have a date that is the 28th of this month. And so you keep praying, but you also keep giving. That's the work part, okay? Your faith is good, but without works is dead. Amen. So you keep on giving, and we appreciate you. All right, that's it. We're going to have our bishop come up in a minute. If we could just pray. Everybody, if you could just center yourselves on God and God alone. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. There is, there is nothing like you. You are everything to us. Everything that we need. You fill every void. You love us like no other. You're consistent. You're consistent, God. So in other words, you're faithful, even when we're not faithful. You're the same today. You were the same yesterday. And you'll be the same tomorrow. And God, if nobody else in our lives has shown themselves faithful and consistent, and we have pity parties over that, help us to recognize you are that consistent that we need. God, I ask that today, God, well, let me even not stop there. Let me ask for forgiveness of our sins. And God, I am standing in the gap and, and, and standing as a mediator because I'm praying before the people. But God, help each and every one of us to ask for forgiveness of our sins. You are just and faithful to forgive us. And so we admit that we're sinful people. We admit that even though we don't do the things that Christians might say, oh, that's a big sin, that anything we have done that you told us not to do or anything we haven't done that you told us to do or anything we've thought in our minds, but we didn't necessarily do it out loud, but we thought it in our minds. We ask that you forgive us for it, God. And God, we're grateful for who you are because you will forgive our sins. And then you not only are just a forgiver of sins, but you throw them. Your word says you throw them into the sea of forgetfulness. And we're grateful for that. God, I ask that tonight's Bible study be a mighty move of God. We are grateful that you give a word every Wednesday, every Sunday. You give a word in this house, God. 
You give a word that grows the people, God. And I'm grateful. My toes were just as stepped on on Sunday. And I could have said, oh, he's talking about me. No, what I said was, thank you, God. Because that means you're still talking to me. And thank you for using our bishop as the conduit, as the leader to give us the word. Use him like never before and bless him like never before. It is in your precious, matchless, glorious name we do pray. And all of God's people say amen. 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 Now let's welcome our bishop. Bishop Reginald D. Smith. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you all so much uh, for coming out every Wednesday, every Sunday, and just um, whenever we have anything. I want to thank you um, most of all for um, um, Sunday. Um, you can cut the music down back there. Um, for Sunday, um, you came out. We was here um, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. You packed the place out at 9, and then you uh, we rode over there um, to the River of Life. I want to thank... Um, Pastor Antoine and Lady Ace for um, hosting us, and we just want to thank God for all um, that God is doing. So I want to thank you all, and we had a chance to go out and eat. Um, that was great. So I told my wife, I said, let's go eat together as a family, and um, because I'm learning you eat together as a family, you get a little tighter, amen. And so that's what we are going to do today, um, Sunday, um, after church. Um, my wife made it, she made it clear. We have been up um, four o'clock in the morning. Um, we actually had to do the entire bylaws and things of that nature and um, insurance and just, I miss a lot. Um, then we've been having meetings uh, with the leadership. Um, and then we have our own personal life. So it's just been a lot, it's been a lot going on. Um, even when we get home tonight, um, we still have a lot to do um, work tonight. But to whom much is given, much is required. Um, there's no need of crying about it. If you want to go somewhere, um, it takes this. You know what I mean? You can't go home and sleep and just watch the football game and eat you some wings and blue cheese and go to sleep. It won't work. Amen. Somebody say it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. And so we're, we're stretching you even the more this year. Somebody said we're stretching you even the more this year. Not going to be long. I'm, I, I really don't. I'm, I'm going to re we teach what I taught Sunday because I never did finish it because I've, I have something new this Sunday. Um, but I'm telling you, by the end of this year, you should, you should grow so much. You should, by the end of this year, um, a couple questions I want to ask. Um, how many of you uh, uh, wrote your vision statement and you're saying, it every, you're saying it every day? Raise your hand. I'm saying mine every day. Amen. Uh, every day. Um, how many of you uh, put money in your savings account like I asked you to do. Um, it don't have to be with a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. I mean you you just have to keep rolling. The more the more you do, the better um you are going to be at the end of the year. Um don't wait till um twenty twenty four and say I'm gonna start. Also um we are going my wife and I are gonna fast uh, for five days and then we are gonna let um the church know when we are going to do this a Daniel fast together. Amen. Um, all my six, what are my seniors at? All my 65 are older. Boom. Let me see that. One, two, three, four. Who about down the back with? Hey, that's my 65. You ain't 65 back there. You 25. Amen. So one, two, three. Who? What, uh, let me see. I'm, I, I need you to be 65. Not, not 64 and a half, 65. Raise your hand, 60, my 65 of One, two, three. Okay, well, I, I all right. So what we're going to do, when you go Sunday, uh, we're going to kill that golden corral. We're going to pay for you Sunday. Amen? Amen. Um, yeah. And so we just want to be a blessing. I, I've learned in my walk with Christ that what you do to others, God will do back to you. I, I have learned that. Don't let somebody convince you not to be a blessing to somebody else. Because the blessing you was going to do, watch this, and you don't do it, might just turn back to be a curse on you. Don't let the devil convince you 
not to bless people. Amen? And so what we're going to talk about, we're going to roll a little bit. I'm going to get ready to go. And so we, we, we first, somebody said Happy New Year. So we started talking this year about vision. All right? Then the next thing we talked about, I don't know if it was Wednesdays or Sundays, we started talking about, somebody said clear vision. Because I, there's no need to have vision on, on the 19th of, of this month. I have to go to the art because my glasses are old and you always have to get your uh, glasses checked. Um, uh, where's Tim at? Tim, go look at my office real quick and get my binoculars. They're in my office hanging up. So we started talking about clear vision. Somebody said clear vision. Then we're talking about what? Walking in your vision. So once you get vision, you get clear vision, and then you start walking in your vision, all right? And when you're walking, now you can see where you're going, all right? Then the next thing that we're talking about today that I started Sunday is walking in your vision by faith. Somebody say by faith. Walking in your vision by faith, by faith. Because vision, when you're walking in vision, so let me try to explain this to help everybody out from 1 to 80. That vision is something that you want to come to pass. Vision is, is a hope. Vision is, 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 is a desire of my heart. Vision is, vision is something that I want. So everybody in the building, God created you, thank you, sir, that God created you um, to, to be somebody. I want you to tell yourself, I'm somebody. Because, because other people will never tell you that you are somebody. They will always make you think that you are the worst thing ever that God has ever made. All right? And so you have to, David says you have to learn how to encourage yourself. I, I got to encourage myself. I, I can't wait on nobody to pat my back. I can't wait on somebody to say you did a good job. You got to walk out and say, I done a great job. Can I get an amen? And so you, so you got to learn how to encourage yourself to keep going, keep going. You don't have, I'm not in your bedroom preaching. The choir is not with you in the grocery store. The band is not with you when you're getting your nails and hair done. All right? So you, you have to take in consideration, put everything in your heart, um, the word of God that you may not sin against thee. All right, so we, tonight we're going to talk about walking in your vision, but by faith. Somebody say by faith. And so what scripture we're going to use tonight, we're going to build on this for the next two weeks, is this right here, Romans 10 and 17. You need to know this by heart. You need to know Romans 10 and 17 by heart. Romans 10 and 17 by heart. It says, so then faith. Somebody say faith. 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 Cometh by hearing. So let's, let's pinpoint faith. Faith is something that you can't see, but you walk in it. All right? You can't, you can't see faith. faith you, 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 you can't feel faith. You can't, you can't buy faith. You can't, you can't. The only thing you can do is grow faith. Because God says that when you was born, this is everybody in the building, that he gave everybody a measure of faith, all right? That's why some people could do some things, and some people say, I'm not going to do it according to your faith. <clears throat> so, so, so then faith cometh by hearing. So the more I hear the word, we just don't have Bible study to, to grow the church financially. We just don't have church to grow the, uh, on Sundays to grow it financially. We, we come to this building to teach you how to use your weapons on the battlefield once you leave church. All right? There's a war that's going on when you leave this building. There's a war going on in your mind, and you cannot let the world convince you or entice you that the world is more than God. All right? The, the world is not more than God. So then faith cometh by hearing. So I got to come to church to hear the word. I must read the Bible to hear the word. I just wasn't born a bishop just preaching at three, but I was committed and consistent. We're going to get into that in a minute. And so hearing by the word of God. 
Because all day long, you have heard something about football, about the president, about the shootings, about the weather, about the school, or whatever. You have heard something. But the only thing that can grow your faith is the word of God. That's the only thing that can grow your faith. That's the only thing that can grow your faith. See, when your faith begins to grow, it's just, let me just show you this in the natural. So, I used to look at $200,000 houses, all right, homes. But when my faith gets to the place that I know with God all things are possible, then you're going to start looking at $500,000 homes. Then when you get more faith on the inside, then you're going to say, I'm going to look at $1,500 uh, uh, million dollar homes. Amen? So, okay, we, just, we, we, we give it a walk in a $1.5 million building because now our faith is growing. Somebody say, God, stretch me, please. God, stretch me, please, please, please. If $20 is kill, killing you, then you need God to stretch you. Truly, you need God to stretch you. So I must get more words. Somebody say, more word. You can't keep waiting on Wednesdays and Sundays to get word. You have to study at your own home to study to show thyself approved. You need to start having Bible study with yourself on Thursdays. Am I helping somebody? You, you need to start reading on Saturdays. Because the more you read, the stronger you are going to get in Christ. Tell your neighbor, I need to get a little stronger. You have to get to the point that you are the giver and not the borrower. You have to get to the place that you are strong and not weak. You have to get to the place that if I don't ever get married, God is still going to supply all my needs. Can I get an amen? Look at your neighbor and say, won't he do it? And so you, you, you got practical ways. You must be practical about what God is doing in your life. Number one, watch this. And so I told you, son, the first thing you must do when you want to want your vision to come to pass is you must surrender all. Your job don't belong to you. Your money don't belong to you. Even what's them cars that they get? Your EBT card don't belong. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have that card. Your visa card don't belong to you. Even your body don't belong to you because the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen? Even a married couple, when the lady don't want to be with the husband at night, the Bible says there's things that a lady can say to a man not to lay with her husband at night. Somebody say, you need to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible. And so the first thing I must do, watch this, before you, I said this Sunday, before you can walk in your vision by faith, you must stop walking by other means. I can't keep walking on my overtime. I can't keep all walking that I'm a doctor. Don't you know that stuff don't work? It works for the natural, but you got to do some stuff in the spiritual realm. That's why me and my wife can get up at 3.30 and 4 o'clock and work all day long because we're working in the spiritual realm and you can't let that devil get in there to kill what God is doing. Somebody said, not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. You got to hear it, keep moving, keep growing. You got to hear it, keep moving, keep growing. The Bible says that they will know you by your fruit. I think, I, we, I think me and my wife got some apples growing now. Can I get an amen? I think me and my wife been consistent. Amen. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so what do faith, what do walking my faith mean? It means that I'm choosing a path to allow God to lead me. I have chosen a way that I want God to lead me. I, yeah, I have an overseer, Bishop Lyle Dukes and Pastor Deborah Dukes. They're my overseers. That means I must sit under them. I must sit under them. I must sit under them. Y'all missing this. So I have some accountability in my life. People who don't have an overseer and doing anything, they don't want no accountability. Oh, I just help y'all real quick. I just help you real quick. Accountability is real, is real important. Because there are some things that before it get to me, it must have had, it got to go through my bishop first. It got to go through the, the, the dukes first, and then it come to me, because there's some things out there I just can't handle. Amen? 
That's why you're taking direct blows and direct hits because you don't have no accountability. That's why you're taking direct blows and direct hits. That's why your kids are out of order. That's why you are because you don't have no accountability. And can't nobody tell you any. I'm going to wait till Sunday and preach. But watch this. And so the first thing I'm going to, I must choose this path. My kids ain't going, but I'm still doing God. My neighbor home every Sunday, but I'm still doing God. I must choose this path. Tell your neighbor it's working for you. And so, the, the, so I must surrender. That means I must submit to authority. I must submit to God. God, I'm leaning, laying, and trusting in you. I'm not going to keep having excuses about coming to Bible study or coming to church or coming to prayer because everything else is secondary in my life. I'm going to do God. I'm going to wrap all my kids up, bring them, because God is more important than any other thing in my life. My God. Tell you never I must submit to authority. You will never get to another level if you never submit to God with all your heart. You will, you will never get there if you don't submit to God and go through the storms and the rain and the wind and the fire. You have to go through all that to get to where you need to be. I was telling my wife today, I said, you know, we're not the chaser anymore. The enemy is now chasing us. You know what I mean? They, he, 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 we, we, we don't made a mark. We, 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 you know what I mean? We're the hunted now. We, we are the hunted. You got to know you're the hunted. That now you smell like you smell like fresh blood. Who is the blood of Jesus? Y'all, you can't miss that. So now we're being hunted because we're making moves and making marks. You got to start making moves and making marks and start being hunted. You got to make them chase you. Y'all keep chasing guys and women. You know they ain't no good. You got to fix yourself up for they can chase you. Can I get an amen? You got to start smelling good. Baby, what did you buy me in New York? What I got on tonight? I got on some Louis Vuitton. My baby said, you sure smell good. Now she, she chasing me, amen. But you got to get to the place where the enemy chase you and you can't be scared. You have to be making marks in the spiritual realm. You got to be a prayer warrior. You got to lay before God. You got to get in your secret closet that what you do in the dark comes to the light. So you got to make sure that it, and don't be scared when the enemy is chasing you because you have all power. Somebody say, I got all power. Don't play. I got all power. You better get you some oil and lift your hands up and say, devil, not today. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Every bill I got shall be paid. You got, somebody say, I have the authority to speak life. And so I must surrender. I must surrender so when we cling to our own desires and dreams and goals, we go nowhere. This year, you must transform looking like God. You got to transform. That means you got to be a walking Bible. If the Bible says that John the Baptist preached the same thing, the kingdom of heaven is here. It's at hand right here. And folk got saved. Even Jesus got baptized by him. That means, watch this, that means that I'm going to take a word, know that word, and I'm going to live on that word. I don't want you to know the whole Bible and not believe it. Get you a scripture and walk on it. See, it's like, all right, let me keep going. And so I, I, I must surrender. Somebody said I got to surrender. I, I got to surrender. Remember I was over, so, okay, all right, and so, and so. It's, 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 it's hard to surrender when you're paying your own bills. Bishop, that's don't know what I got going on in my house. I'm not concerned because you got power. <laughs> I'm not concerned because I'm giving you some, some weapons to work with. I, I, ain't, I, I ain't ain't got no groceries in my life. I bet you if you start putting 10% in, in you'll you, you always have groceries. If you start putting 10% in, you'll always have light because you have power. You are, you are allowing the enemy to pull your vision right from under you. Tell somebody, I got to walk by faith, though. I got to walk by faith. I, I, I got to give God. We only come here Wednesday for an hour, Sunday for an hour. I got to give God two hours out of the week. That, that's, that's not saying a lot. Amen. And so I, I, was, I was telling them Sunday that after you surrender, 
That means I, I'm giving it to God. I'm lifting up my hands. How many of you know you can't do it? How, how many of you know you done tried it and you can't do it? You can't, you can't do it. There's no way you can do it. So the next thing I must do is I must refocus. I got to adjust the focus of, my, of a lens or one's eyes or one's spirit. I can't, I can't, you know when you're in the streets, this is what they say. Watch the day, Auntie. They'll say stuff like this. You ain't going to keep carrying me. Y'all hear me? That, you got to tell that devil you can't keep carrying me. You can't, because I'm going to refocus. That's why I got my glasses there. So, so I, I can't see with my natural eyes all the way in the back. But if I, I put these goggles on, I can, look, I can look all the way back there in the back. I, I can see all the way back there in the back. Eddie got on a necklace. I can look right back there in the back. Sandra walking. I can look all the way in the back. So you got to put on your spiritual eyes this year and refocus. See, you thought you saw something last year, and it really wasn't that because you was out alive. When they saw Jesus walking on water, the first thing they said, it's a ghost. But they had to refocus. Tell you never, I got to refocus. I got to refocus. And so I, I, I must adjust my spirit this year because you have allowed so many folk in your spirit. You have carried other people's problems when God told them to cast all of their cares upon him for he cares for the problem. You sitting there trying to be Jesus and you never died and rose before. If you can go die and me roll the stone away and you come back out, I'll walk with you. Can I get an amen? But you can't be Jesus. And so you got to tell, what did I say this year? You must tell people the scripture, the word of God. Stop trying to be Jesus before you mess up and care what you can't carry. And so you got to refocus. This year, you got to refocus. You got to refocus. You got to refocus. That means, that means, it, it's, that means I can't get caught up in circumstances of life that, feel, that may consume you. You can't get caught up in that this year. You, can, you cannot get caught up in that you don't have enough money for your bills. You can't get caught up in that, that your car payment is late. You, you can't get caught up in that they gave somebody else the promotion. You can't get caught up there. God has designed your time for you. Let me say it again. God has designed your time for you. It's God's timing. It's God. Somebody says God's timing. Even the things you don't want to do is working for your good. It's working for your good. Even the things you don't want to do, even the things you don't want to go through, even the things you don't want to handle, it's working. Somebody says it's working for my good. It's working for my good. And so, and so, and so I got to refocus, Vontae. This year, I got to refocus. Because if you wasn't going somewhere in life, you would never go through problems. But because you're going somewhere, that's why start, stuff is starting to act up. That's why it's acting up because if you won't go nowhere, because if the enemy can't get you, it'll get your children. If it can't get your children, it'll get that. If it can't get the money, it'll get that. That's why you have to put that fence of faith around you so the devil can't get you. Can I get amen? I remember, I think I told this story. I was smoking and drinking. I was smoking and drinking. Old man walked up to me and said, hey, sir. I said, yeah, I probably cussed, yeah. He say, you can't do both of them. You got to give up one. <laughs> he said, you're going to die real quick. Tell you, Debbie, you can't be in the world and the church. You got to give up one. Tell him, you got to give up one. You got you to gotta figure out if I'm going to give all my time to the world or I'm going to give all my time to God. You got to figure this thing out. You got to figure out which one you're going to serve. You got you to gotta figure out, no, nah, I ain't too tired to come to work, church on Sunday. I, I ain't too, I ain't too, la you know you lazy. Can I get amen? You got to get up and get your clothes together even if you got to come to church in sweatpants. Tell them your life depending on this. 
Your life depending on this. This is this is an SOS. This is SOS. This is my life is dependent on this. And folk will try to make you think that you're doing too much God. I want you to touch your neighbor and say, like my bishop told me, this is what we do. This is what I do. This I this is what I do. If if you if you can fit in, come on, get in. <laughs> this is what we do. We do church, 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 God, 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 God. We give. I put 10% in. That's what I do. Dante, cut that heat down one. That's what I do. So I got somebody said I gotta refocus. And what the enemy do, the enemy, the enemy know exactly where you are weak at. If you like chocolates, she gonna bring you some chocolates. And she know you married. Can I get an amen? If you like BMW's convertible, he gonna come by with a BMW convertible. Boom, boom. You like to ride, girl? No, I don't wanna ride. Boom, boom, girl, come on, get in. All right, I get in. Amen. Because the enemy know exactly what you like. But when you're in the word of God, you are covered. It says that when the enemy comes in like a flood with the candy, with the car, with the convertible, that God will lift up a standard and block what you used to fall for and not fall for it anymore. Tell you anybody I need a whole bunch of God this year. I got to refocus. Tell them you got to refocus. You home looking at the housewives and trying to live like them. You can't live like the housewives of Atlanta. You about to live like the housewives of Chesapeake. Can I get amen? You focusing on them, baby. They got crazy money. All right? And so, and so watch this. Now we're starting fresh. So one thing I had to learn first later, watch this, is that, is that our physical sight can often act like a spiritual blindness. That sometimes your physical sight what you see. You'll mess around and walk in the spirit of jealousy. You'll walk around and mess in the, walk in the spirit of pride. You'll, you'll mess around and say, why not me? Because your, 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 your physical sight sometimes mess up your spiritual sight because you'll tell God, why not me? And God says, because you're looking at the wrong stuff, I'm going to bless you if you close your mouth and close your eyes. Am I helping you real quick? Y'all done looked at something, got it in your mind, and now you're messing up what God really wanted to do for you. I don't like light-skinned men. Well, close your eyes, he'll be dark-skinned. I don't, I, don't, I don't like short men. Well, close your eyes. He'll be six foot two. Can I get an amen? Your natural sight messes up your spiritual vision. My God. Somebody said, my, have, have you ever known? If everybody was blind and couldn't see, you'll be dating people you'll never want You'll be li because if we was all blind, you wouldn't even care about what house you living in as long as you got a roof over your head. God Almighty. I'm trying to help y'all here today. Your natural sight have messed up your spiritual walk with God because you look at that stuff as now that's in your spirit. But if you close your eyes, there are some things you wouldn't even worry about. If you close your eyes, you were, if everybody was blind, you couldn't tell Nike from Puma. The Bible says that Adam and Eve was blind to the world. But as soon as they ate the forbidden fruit, they knew that they was naked. Stop letting your natural sight mess with your spiritual vision. Can I get an amen? It's what you see. It's what you see. I got to get that coat. I got to get that car. You couldn't tell the difference from a Nissan Versa from a Mercedes as long as you're not walking. But we don't look at it. 
we done looked at it, and this is what I want because now you're looking at your money and saying, I can't get God this. Close your eyes because you don't let your natural ways, you don't let things that you see, a PS5, stop you from being a blessing in the, y'all got to help me in here. So, 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 our physical sight can often act like a spiritual blindness. That's good, ain't it? To walk by faith, we must refocus. We got to. We got to refocus. I got, I got, I, I told my wife, I said, this year, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to say this. I don't. So, you got to start speaking what you don't want to do so you can be a better person. Because I'm like, if God did this in three years with me acting like that, can you imagine if I clean that up? In six years, I'll be walking on water. Y'all got to help me this year. If God kept you up all your life, can you imagine if you really start doing good, what God really would give you? Somebody said, cover your eyes and walk by faith. My God. And so when we begin to actively trust God, more than we trust our own perception, God gonna do a new thing in your life. But we're so we're so caught up on what we can do. Don't you know God can do more than you, more than me, more than all of us put together? Don't you know that? And so one thing I must do, we got 15 minutes. After after I surrender, the first thing I got to do is surrender and say, it's not mine. It's not, it's not mine. Not mine. I, I got to bless. I got I to gotta, I gotta say this, and I'm going to say it over the pulpit, but I'm not going to tell you the amount. I've been preaching for 16 years. I'm going out preaching last Sunday. This guy gave me a check that I have, that it was the biggest check I ever received as I was preaching. Y'all about to hear me. Because God will, open, God will open up the windows of heaven. He'll, see, when one won't do, see, God want to know how you're going to act when that one won't do. But God will bless you so big, man. Y'all better help me in here. First thing I did, I said, baby, let me pay my tithes. I said, then let me shoot you some because if it won't for you, I wouldn't be me. Y'all got to help me in here. Amen. You always got to bless somebody that's walking with you. Never can you walk by yourself. The Bible says if two or three are gathered together. Amen. No, no, no who you got beside you. And so the next thing I said, we must surrender. Lou, we got to refocus. And this is what we must stand on, Mr. Brown, is stand on God's promises. You got to stand on his promises. The word of God provides the solid ground on which we can take our steps of faith. Um, uh, Tim, um, Vontae, go get me three Bibles real quick. Them Bibles in the back. Give me three of them somewhere. Go grab me. Sandra, grab me some Bibles. Eddie, somebody, get me some Bibles. Get me some Bibles real quick. So I'm going to stand on God's promises. Y'all see them back there? You can get me any of them. Give me some books. I like their Bibles. You got to stand on the promises of God. The Word of God provides, watch this. Solid ground on which you can take your steps of faith on. It, that's what it does. It, 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 it gives you a solid foundation. Now, I'm not going to stand on God's Bible, the Word of God. Thank you, sir. And so, it's like this. So, what the Word of God does is it gives you foundation. Watch this. And it gives you direction. Because I don't want to walk this way because I don't see the word. But because the word is in front of me, it guides me and it gives me light. That's what the word of God does. It guides me. So once you read your Bible every day, it guides you. It gives you light. It gives you wisdom. And so when you don't have the word with you, what you doing? For 40 years, they, they, 
Because guess what? As soon as Moses left, they didn't see the word. So instead of going, and some of us right now, we go in a circle. You have to put the word of God in front of you. If I want more, I got to give. You cannot not keep giving and say I want more money. Give and it shall be given to you. Press that. Y'all missing this. I'm telling you. You got to be led by the word of God. You, I, watch this. I feel like I'm weak. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for. But you got to be led by the word of God. Because if you don't have no word, you're not going to quote scriptures in a time of need. See, if you don't have the word, you're not going to say, you're going to say, I'm going to play that mega million and hope I win. I then when I got to go back to church. i never seen the righteous. See, when you got the word, you try the world. When you have the word, you do God. Let me say it again. If you don't have the word, you do the world. Some of y'all can't wait till uh, Portsmouth uh, Gambling Casino open. I try my luck with the casino. I'm trying to help y'all. Tell your neighbor, walk by the word of God. It'll lead you, it'll take you places you've never been before. If you start reading that word and get it in your spirit tomorrow, you're going to be a little better. God can start telling you and teaching you and walking with you and giving you light in a dead situation. You might be in a valley today, but if you walk by the word of God, he, he says, uh, faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. All right, so I must stand on God's promises. We, we really don't know the promises of God. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31 says, the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. Watch this, 30, Psalms 32 and 8. He will teach you. He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way to go. You got to know the promises of God. Psalms 37, 23. He says, the Lord make firm the steps of the one who delights in him. That's, that's, that's the promises of God. I got a couple more. Uh, watch this, Matthew 11 and 28. It says, it says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. That if you come to God, see, I feel this in my spirit. Some of y'all have took on people's problems for a long time. Now you can't handle anything. He says, but you got to come to God who are weary. He said, I'll give you some sleep. I laid in that bed last night. My wife said I was snoring like a fire engine. But I was asleep as a fool. I, I laid down. The, they could have came and got everything in my house. I, baby, go ahead and take it. Let me sleep. Baby, let me help you take the TV. Go ahead. My key's over there. Go and get it. Because God said he'll give me rest. And I'm not going to worry about no material things because I get up, I go to God. He'll give me some else. So he says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient enough for you that when you're going through, if you just, just know God has given out grace, it's sufficient enough for you. Can I get an amen? I got that, Vontae. And so, and so I must stand on God's promises, all right? Uh, if I don't, vision will never happen because vision come with some trials and tribulations. And so you must stand on God's promises that know that God is going to do it for you. The next thing, I got two more points and we're going to close out, is that, watch this, is this year you must be committed. You got to be committed. You got to be committed. Stop making God secondary. Everything else come behind God. I must, I must do God. Dedicated and loyal, wholeheartedly dedicated. I must be dedicated. When Bishop look up, yep, I ain't got to worry about them because they're right there. I don't even have to worry about giving because they're always going to give. My God, I must be dedicated, loyal. I got to be loyal. I must be wholeheartedly dedicated. It's like when you first get, we, anybody ever met somebody? And we talked about this all the time. 
And y'all can't even get enough on the phone. You be like, hello, hey, boo. What you, y'all go from eight, what you eat for lunch? What you do today? And that's one o'clock, y'all still talking. Now y'all in love. Hey, babe, I'm tired, me too. You tired, yeah? For real, uh-huh. I'm tired too. We all tired. All right, so we're gonna hang up together. One, two, one, two. Babe, you ain't hang up, uh-uh. Can we talk five more minutes? That's how you got to be with God. You got to be dedicated, loyal, wholeheartedly, and dedicated. You got to be dedicated to God. I'm coming to you because I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, God. You woke me up. You started me the right way, God. You're blessing me like never before. I don't have the money that I want, but God, you gave me something. I'm not staying where I want to stay, but I got a roof over my head. I'm not driving what I want to drive, but at least I'm driving something. You got to be dedicated and loyal to God, and God will bless you like never before. Tell somebody, I got to be committed. I got to be committed this year. I can't. I can't play. I got to be, because I got to get over this hurdle that's, that I'm in. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being broke. I want to live like I really want to live. I want some vacations. I want to be happy. I want rest. I want plenty of money. I want to look good. I want to smell good. Tell somebody you got to commit yourself. Tell them you got to commit yourself. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But it takes commitment. I'm tired, but I still got to do it. I don't feel good, but I still got to do it. I'm broke, but I'm going to make my way. You tell your neighbor, I got to be committed. It's just like them women coming all the way from Newport News and Hampton. They got to be committed. Because if you ain't committed, you're going to fall off. Can I get amen? But if you committed, I sit in the traffic because I'm going to get me a word. I tell your neighbor, I'm committed. And so I must be committed. I got to be dedicated. I got to be loyal. God is looking for your dedication. And that last one is I must be what? Consistent. That means acting or done in the same way over time. Somebody said time after time. I have learned in my walk with Christ that I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And I'm learning that if you commit yourself and be consistent at what you do, it's just like this. We all, for, happy, somebody say happy new year. What's your new year's resolution? I want to lose weight. We all know that. We all know that. Now, if you walk every day and watch what you eat every day, that weight going to fall off. But the world has tricked us because Sunday we're going to eat some other pork chop. <laughs> Sunday we're going to eat some other ribs. Can I get an amen? But if we be consistent at what we do, there's nothing too hard for God. You got to be consistent with God. My wife told me, I asked her, I said, are we going to ever stop doing this amount? She said, it's a snowball effect, the consistency. Because she said, one thing I like about you, you don't counsel Bible study, you don't counsel church, you don't, you don't counsel none of that. She said, I don't see you tired, I don't see you weak. I done, he, she said, but you still do it. She said, that's why God keep blessing us. Because we are consistent at what we do. We make time for God. And you got to be consistent. At what, so now we, we're walking every morning. We first started my leg. I said, Lord God. I, I, girl, you're walking too fast. My knee. I, I need some more shoes or something. So now, now we're walking every day. So I started off like this. My God. So now I'm up a little bit now. Today I was like this. You. I told him, let me go back and get my sticks and we're. Then I go back and get my stuff. I said, let's walk. Because I've been doing it day after day after day after day. Now I'm getting my air. Now I'm getting my wind. Now I'm feeling good. Because, because when you start something, it's hard. But if you be consistent at it. See, tithe the offering. Offering ain't no fight for me. It ain't even no. Because I'm consistent. And I done seen what it does. See, see studying 
I started because I need the word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Now I know more word. You know? And so, but people know what you are consistent in. Man, you on my line, consistent. You understand? People know troublemakers because they're consistent in what they do. You People know, watch this, they might not tell you, but they know what you, man, all you do is complain about how you feel. Yep, you're consistent in complaining. People know what you, people know what you are consistent in. Can I get an amen? You know you're going to get a worship about my wife when she grabbed this mic. She's consistent in worshiping God. Can I get an amen? And so you got to know that Vontae Valencia, they're going to park them cars. The Emory, them, they're going to park them cars. Y'all come on in. Y'all go, hey, how y'all doing? God bless them. You don't, even, you don't even know when they tired, sick, or whatever. Because they, 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 they already know, Bishop need my help, so I'm going to go out there and do the best I can do because I'm a mirror of him. <laughs> See, you got to know you're a mirror of me because you can't keep mirroring yourself. Because I'm not a guy of out of order. Can I get that? One thing I hate is out of order people. My God. My God. I should have threw that mic way back there. Because I love consistency. And I love order. I love that. I love that. Out of order things I don't even deal with. I, I like I don't see it. I go to God on it. Because you got to be consistent with God so God can bless us. Like I showed them Sunday at the other church. When, when one get blessed, we all get blessed. That's how that thing work. Well, that's how it work. When one get blessed, we all stop letting inconsistent people come in your life. Stop letting the inconsistent, ungodly folk determine what you're going to do the next day. They are inconsistent in everything that they do. Can I get an amen? You keep letting inconsistent People who not following God, not reading their word, get in your, in your life. Leave us. I got some preachers in here, boy. I'm not the only one feeling that way. But if you be consistent and you be committed this year, your vision is coming to pass. But you got to be consistent. You got to get up tomorrow morning and start reading your vision. You got to pray. I go in the room, I say, uh, Babe, I'm hungry. I know y'all after I read this, after I pray and read this word. So I go down there and try to cook some bacon, burn that bacon up. Because I'm not a consistent cooker. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but you got to be consistent in what you do. God has a bucket, a boatload of blessings waiting on you. He got a boatload of blessings. If you know the track, the trailer of blessings that God have for you, be like, I'm, I'm a, I don't know how to get in this truck, but I'm going to get in here this year. Can I get an amen? Can y'all clap for God? Yeah. Tell him I got to be consistent. I'm going I'm to run it back real quick, and we're going to close it up. Watch this. First thing I, I got to do is I got to surrender. Next thing, I, I must refocus. The next thing, I must stand on God's promises. Can I get an amen? Next thing, you must be committed. Tell them, I must be committed. Next thing, I got to be consistent. I, let me ask this question. We're going to get ready to get out of here. I mean, how many really didn't know the promises of God for real? But let's be honest. How many really didn't know the promises of God? Let's, you the first one rose right there in the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you my notes. All, and all my notes, it has some of the promises of God. Tim, come get this for me and give it to her. Amen? This belongs, you can, it, it's the promises of God. You can have my notes. Hey, Eddie, you remember I used to give you my notes? Give, them, give that young lady back there in the back. She got her hand up. That's the, pro, somebody say the promises of God. Amen. Can y'all clap one more time? What we are going to do, we are getting ready to go home. Me and my wife got to get back to work. But what we're going to do, make sure this Sunday, as soon as we leave here, the place open up at 12 o'clock. All my 65 and olders, we are paying for you. Um, this Sunday, uh, my wife went over the menu. I would love for the church to come out there and eat with us. Amen. Um, and so we're just going to, I just feel like we need to eat together. All right. We're just going to eat together. If you don't have it, catch us the next time. Simple as that. 
I go home and make your own smuggled pork chop. Right around. They got mac and cheese. They had some of everything. They had some of everything. So we're gonna we're gonna go out this Sunday. Um, I'm at the church, and I just want to say thank you again for for packing that church out last Sunday. Um, can y'all clap for yourself? Because if I go out and preach or come in here and teach and have nobody follow me, I'm just taking a walk. Can I get that man? Just taking a walk. So we have a lot going on. We, we get ready to deal with the married couples. I, I got one minute. We get ready to deal with the married couples. We're going to take all the married couples bowling with us this year. Um, this year, we're going to take the single ministry. We really don't know where we're going. Um, I know where we're going. We're going to, uh, um, we're going to karaoke where they have food and all that stuff. We've been there before, so we're gonna all the singles. We're gonna if you if you're not married and don't have a ring on, you single. Well, I've been dating for five. You're single, all right. So we're going to do karaoke. We uh, eating food. All the married couples. We're going bowling. Um, we're doing a lot this year, all right. We 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 just want to become a a, a tight knit family. We want to make it that no devil can break through what we're doing. Um, also, we're going mega. We're going into our church. Pray for me and my wife tomorrow. We have to go to the bank tomorrow. So pray for us tonight that no weapon form can prosper. That God will cut the red tape and give us favor. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. We have, uh, we have been on the phone with every leader. We have set times up. We've been Zooming. We've been coming here. It has been a handful. Amen. We, I mean, but it's good because if we ain't had nothing doing, if we want nothing popping, we ain't doing nothing. All right. So don't forget to give. Always, always give. Somebody say, always give. Always give. Look at my, look at my vision. One of my vision. Wisdom, church members, wisdom, helicopter, residual income, health. God, hear my prayers on one accord. All right. I wrote, I did that. I'm gonna ride with that. All right. So that's our cash app. You can go on uh, dollar sign P O P P C one. We always give, always give, always give, uh, give till you give out, cause you you can't. God always give to the giver. He always give to the sower. Always, always, always. He always, always. So make sure um you give um. Do we have anybody working that side tonight, Sister Porter? Can you go over there real quick? Um, if you wanna um do Cash App up there, if you wanna do Square. If you need an envelope, we got ushers back there. About we have some of the best ushers, greeters, and parkers. Amen. What we are gonna do? We're gonna ask not this Sunday, but next Sunday. If you want to be a part of the uh, whatever you want to be this year, don't sit in the seats this year. I want you to do what? Well, yeah, I, don't sit in the seats this year. I, I I ain't got no clothes. You got on something tonight. I want you to be an usher. I want you to be a parker. I want you to be a greeter. I want you to be whatever you want to be. Just do something for God. I, I can't do no more pick up paper than walk around church and pick up paper when you give. You know, just, just, I, I can't do no more cry. We're well, sitting in the back and just cry all day. Just do, somebody say, do something. Just do something. I, 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 want, I want to be a minister. Well, let me know. Let me know. Also, um, this year, starting maybe, maybe in a couple, th three or four weeks, I am going to allow the ministers to start teaching two ministers, three ministers, they're going to get some preaching and teaching time on Wednesdays. So you're going to know what we got up in here. Amen? Amen. So on Wednesday, but I'm still going to come through. Just when you don't see me, uh, I want a bishop to preach. Bishop time. Amen? Let them folk preach and teach and show the law that Jesus is love. Amen? Because they. Uh, that, so that's what we're going to do. We, we have some of the greatest teachers and preachers up in this building. Amen? And so we're going to do a lot more with um, Bishop Lyle Dukes. We are going up there for four days. Um, in the month of June or July, we will. Let, in the month of July, I would love for the church to go with us. We're gonna set up a bus. We're gonna set up the hotels. We're gonna stay up there for four days, and we're gonna worship and praise with our spiritual leader. All right, that's what we're gonna do this year. So we have a lot. Get your get your suitcase together and get you some money together. All right, because we gone this year. We're not gonna always be here. All right, we 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 out there. Somebody say out. Oh, we're going in our new building this year. We have a lot going on. We have a lot. Can y'all clap for all that God? We gave out our first scholarship. We call it the Charles E. Davis Scholarship. It's on Facebook. Our first $500 scholarship. Amen. 
God is really doing that. Charles East Davis, that's my dad that passed away. And so we named it in, our, in his name. So we want to keep the educators. We want to keep praying for our teachers, amen. They, they snap and they go, but hey, that's why the teachers need to be having a Bible-based church. Thank you, God, that our educators are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. They don't even make a million dollars. Now they're in there shooting in school. Sit down. Stop. Stop sending your kids to school mean and mad. Have you said they got a problem? Let them stay home that day. It's cool. Trust me, the teachers already know. Mm. All right? Don't keep going up there talking junk to them teachers and hurting teachers. Stop doing that. Stop. Don't do that. They, 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 they're educating our, our, our students. All right? They are educators. Please stop. Anything, give them a bonus. Right or wrong? All right. Can y'all clap one more time for God? <laughs> Baby, you got anything else? Let me pray real quick and we'll get out of here. Don't, please don't forget to give every Wednesday, every Sunday. Always give. Always give. Father God, we thank you, we adore you, and we honor you. For there is no God like you. God, you set high and you look low. You're still the God yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your promises. Because you are God that cannot lie. God, we thank you that, that, that you have took rest in this building. God, we worship you and we adore you. We love you, God. Give us travel and mercies back to our destination. I bind that phone from that person calling, trying to distract you tonight. Tonight you shall have rest. And it shall be enough when you get home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can